strength, our refuge, the glory and the lifter of our head, our help in ages past, our present help in times of need, is also our help in ages to come. We give him glory, we give him praise. Clap your hands, everybody. Let's worship him. Let's give him glory. Let's give him praise. We worship you, Lord. The only God. The only God. I will declare. I will declare. You are the only God. The only God. The only God. Come on, declare.
your faithfulness, your kindness, your mercy. We refuse to forget. We remember. We remember. We remember. You have been too good to us. You have been awesome to us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are the pillar over this house. No man on earth can say, if not for me, you are the pillar, you are the helper, you are the raiser. We worship you. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for this spiritual family. We thank you for our branches. We thank you for your good hand upon our lives. We thank you for all the men and the women, the workers, the ambassadors of this house. We thank you. We give you praise. You have been so good. Thank you, Lord. I have known the Father cares for me. He's been good. He's been good to me, God. He's always there for me. Father, we say, take all the glory. Take all the honor. As we get into your word, show us your word again. Let your word become flesh. Change us. Transform us. Let our lives never remain the same. And you alone will take all the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. You want to put your hands together for the Lord and give the Lord a shout of applause this morning. Glory! Give five people a high five this morning. Tell them God is good. God is good. Walk around. Tell them God is good. His mercies, they endure forever. Hallelujah. Amen. You may please be seated this morning. Glory be to God. Are you excited? Glory be to God. Amen. I want to bring us a word of admonition for a few minutes before we get into... We're praising God all through today. Amen. That's all we're doing before we get into high voltage praise. Amen. Let's celebrate Minister Diary Justified. Thank you for being with us. He looks gentle, but I promise you. Let me specially appreciate some of our, our friends that are with us this morning. Um, can we celebrate all our guests this morning? Thank you so much, Saz and Mars, for being here. Let me start from my left. Our Pastor Sam and Mrs. Ajomale from the Logo Church. Help me celebrate them this morning. Thank you very much. Ah. I can see my brother, brother Oye Deji, I'm sure my eyes can, and his dear wife. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate them. Thank you so much, sir, and ma, for being with us. Glory to God. Pastor Tolu, let's celebrate Pastor Tolu. Thank you. Pastors and Mrs. Adeni, thank you. Wow. Pastor Sam left his church on a Sunday morning to be here. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, I can say prophet Sheyo Sas. I mean, when people leave their church on a Sunday morning, can we celebrate them? Thank you very much. Pastor of the King's Church, thank you so much. I appreciate you. It means a lot if people can leave their service. I mean, I can't leave my service on Sunday morning. I mean, there's no honorarium. My pastor taught me, you know. So when I see people do it, I, I really appreciate them strongly. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Thank you. Let me specially appreciate Dr. and Mrs. Oladejo. Let's put our hands together for them. They are very kind and good people. Help me celebrate them so well. Thank you very much, sir and ma'am. Uh, let me appreciate Reverend Benitia Juliet. She's a powerful woman, a female voice, powerful voice for young women. She does a powerful work at PFN. Let's celebrate Reverend Juliet. Thank you so much, ma'am. I mean, just yesterday, she just heard and she said she'll be here. I said, wow, thank you. Thank you, Reverend Juliet. I appreciate you. Uh, Pastor Daria Kilaj, a dear friend of the house. Let's celebrate him. Glory. I hope I'm not missing out anybody. Glory to God. All our internal pastors, I appreciate you. Let's celebrate all our pastors at Eden. 
and all the branches will love you. Everybody connected this morning. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. I hope I did not forget anybody. And all the friends that came with um, Dari Justified, let's celebrate them. We love you sincerely this morning. Glory be to God. There's nothing like the gift of people. It's one of, the, it's one of God's most powerful gifts that he can give to us. Let me do a quick recap in a few minutes on what Eden represents. So it's a vision recast. So there's not so much of charismatic teaching. I want to do a recast from God's perspective. Because sometimes we may be clapping for ourselves and you, we, may not, we may not even be aligned with God's perspective. And it is very dangerous for men to look at another man and begin to clap and say they are doing well. You need to check the measure of how God really rates men and how God can say whether you are doing well or you are not doing well. And one of the things that I've said, this is probably the first message I preached in this church 12 years ago. It's probably the same message. So I had to go back and draw my notes. I, I have notes of 20 years where Dr. Mike Modok teaches at Winning Ways Africa and I'm writing. I have those notes. Believers Bible Conference that I used to hold at National Study of, I have those notes. So this was probably a note of 15 years ago. I'm sure it doesn't look like it. You know. In fact, the person who gave me this book will be shocked I still have this book. The person probably gave me the book in 2000. It was Laju Iran that gave me that book, you know, many years ago. Um, I believe that God had a plan for the earth. And so because he had a plan for the earth, he decided to plant an extension of heaven on the earth. So there was an outpost that God needed to use as a representation of what should happen on the earth. Then God decided to plant a garden in the world. So there was a place called Eden in the beginning. And in that place called Eden, eastward of that place is where God planted a garden. And why was God going to plant a garden? God always wanted relationship with man. God knew that he needs to meet with man. You know, in that time, God comes to meet man. It is now that God, that man is looking for God. We are the one coming to church to look for God. You know, in that time, it was God that comes down. He comes at the cool of the day. He comes to fellowship with man. Are we together? Good. You know, now we are the ones trying to reach God, which is where the definition of the word religion comes from, an attempt to reach God. An attempt to reach God. So different people have different ideas about their attempt of reaching God. So the Hindu says, oh, this is our own way of reaching God. The Buddhists will tell you this is our own approach to reaching God. So everybody, the Rastafarians will give you their own idea. Everybody developed an idea on how to reach God. Which is what started what is called religion. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. God wanted to carry out a project on the earth. And so that project, he called it Project Eden. The place that is a representation of what the supernatural looks like. So when you say that, what does he what heaven looks like? When you check the Eden, when you check the garden that is found at Eden, you should be able to say that this is a little idea about what God had in mind. And you see, that garden that God planted was a very small place. Eastward in that Eden. A small place. He didn't populate the world with all his men. He just planted a seed there called Adam. Then by reverse process engineering, Adam would get married. That's why Eve came in. So there was a garden. Now Adam was formed. Eve came as an addition to him. Then they learned the art of reproduction. Then man began to multiply itself. Which means that it was a colony mentality. God did not just create 1,000 people at the same time. No. He didn't create one million people at the same time. He created just one. 
You know, because if you check the history of things in the Bible, God will only create one particular thing and you would have to figure out how to reproduce it yourself. He created just one man, one goat, one horse, one chicken that by process engineering, you understand how multiplication happens. And that's why you understand when God began to speak to man, he began to give the first charges of penetration to the world and says, be fruitful, multiply. So he begins to teach you how to colonize the earth. So Eden was literally a place that was planted in the Bible. Is this making sense? Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Let's open our first scriptures. Very quickly. So like I said, it's a direct reflection of the realm of heaven on the earth. And God had an idea of a colony mentality to be able to help man to become who they should be. Glory be to God. Before we open that scripture, I also want to say this. That when God is going to colonize a people, there's a shared language. There's a shared constitution. There's a value system that he puts into them. This is why we have the Bible. The constitutional document that God gave us to be able to colonize and this is the idea. From the little people, the little number that God created, all he says to them is, go into the world and go and infuse them with the culture of the kingdom. There's a culture of the kingdom that God says, go influence the world with. So if he says, go influence the world with it, it means that the people who are part of that kingdom, they are the people who will now carry, so they have to be well taught, they have to be indoctrinated with a balanced teaching of the word of God, and these people must be people who understand the culture of God, and you must be able to take that culture even up to every sphere of influence. And you remember, everything we teach here is how to affect and bring about transformation in all the influence, in all the spheres of the world, how to influence them for God. So Eden is first a place. Eden style is colony. God wanted to colonize a people on the earth. So he gave them shared values, he gave them shared system, and he gave them a common language that they must be able to speak. Glory be to God. Now let's go to the scripture now. Let's go to Genesis chapter number. Start from chapter 1. Let's start from verse 1. Then we'll go to 2, then we'll go to 3. Go to verse 26. Genesis 1 and verse 26. Very quickly. Now, God spoke to man. Can we do the King James now? Let's do the King James. So, God said, let us make man in our image. And after our likeness. And we've taught that over the years. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air. So, this talks about the intention of God. God's intent at the beginning. What was in his mind? He wanted man to have dominion. He wanted man to colonize the world. He wanted it to have dominion. Somebody say dominion. So he said, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. Then verse 27. See what the six does. And God blessed them. Can I have verse 27? So God created man in his own image. And in the image of God created he, male and female, and created them. Verse 28. And God blessed them. And God now said to the people that he made, as at this time, it was just man, mankind, Adam. And God said to them. So inside Adam, he said, God said to them. There was just one person in front of God. But God said to them, because inside Adam is all the generation of man that will come out from. Does that make sense to you? So God began to bless them. So the same day Adam was blessed was the same day we were blessed. Does that make sense? I was blessed the same day Adam was blessed. I was in his loins when he blessed me. Glory be to God. And God said to man, now be fruitful. I want you to colonize the earth, but you've got to be fruitful. And the fruitfulness is not just of the womb. 
Fruitfulness in all spheres. Fruitfulness of the mind. Your brain children. Fruitfulness of the brain. Fruitfulness of the hand. Fruitfulness of the leg. Fruitfulness on all levels. He wants you fruitful. Like he's been taught. God's only intention for fruitfulness cannot just be to have babies. He wants you to be fruitful. There are people who are fruitful with their mouth. That is justified is fruitful with his mouth. I think he's also fruitful with his legs. There are people who write, they are fruitful with their hands. So, fruitfulness is a cycle before God. Then he says, be fruitful. The second thing he says is, multiply. Multiply. Whatever God has given to you, you know, multiplies from the word multiple layers. Build up multiple layers. From one, move to two. From two, move to four. From four, move to ten. Just ensure that you're not stagnant. So he says, multiply. Somebody say, multiply. Number three, he says, replenish the earth. Replenish. Now, what replenish? If I say, go replenish a store, what I'm saying is that what used to be there is now out. I'm saying, go bring it back and put it there. So it means that something is missing in the world. There's something that is missing. So you can see that every human being that God created will have something very powerful to put as addition to our world. It's missing. He said, you go replenish it. That's why you found purpose. That's why you have a vision. That's why you have a dream. He says, go put it back. And that's the kingdom culture. Some things are missing on the earth. Go put it back. That's why God is going to send you to the tech, the fashion, the, to the different industries. Go put it back. Amen. Remember last week we said that the mainstream is not different from God. God is the mainstream. From him, all things flow. And towards him, all things will come. So we, can, we have to take it back. So you see, the life of Eden is not just a life. It's not just a religious life. It's a life of transformation. Transformation. Are we transforming our world? Are we transforming the sectors that we find ourselves? Remember I said to you, the real church is not on Sunday. The real church is when? Monday to Friday. That's the agora. That's where you play. That's where the light of God functions. We only come, maybe on a Sunday morning, to get kingdom updates. What God is saying about what we should go do for the next few days. So the real church is not here. I think that this place should even be for unbelievers. If you're a believer, your real church is Monday to Friday. So he says, go back there. Be fruitful. Multiply. Then he said, replenish. Put it back. Whatever is missing, put it back. So you are there to put back some things. Glory be to God. Then the fourth thing he said, subdue the earth. Subdue the earth. And it's clear, he didn't give us the world, he gave us the earth. He said, subdue the earth. Subdue it. In all you do, I always like to share, for many years, I'm not sure if Mark Zuckerberg has been to this country more than twice. Is it once or twice? Once. And he may never come back to this part of the world again. Maybe once or twice. For many years before he came to this country, we could feel him. He had subdued us. Every house carried his presence, yet he's not omnipresent. Every house. To, it, 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 it's, a, it's a strong power play to the point that if he looks at the entire church of God on the earth and says, the church of Jesus, you are mad. You know, you will hear his voice, but he won't hear your voice. The only way he will hear your voice is when you go back to the technology he created and respond through Facebook or through WhatsApp or Instagram to say that we are not mad. Subdue. There are things that God has put inside of you. Giftings. Great talents. Great industries. Great corporations that will come out of this house. But God says, you will subdue the earth. Somebody say amen to that. So it's important that we understand what those things meant. What is in Eden? As, why, as I round up. What is in Eden? So go to Genesis chapter 2 now. Very quickly. Start from verse 9. Out of the ground, 
made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden that God created on the earth or planted in the earth one of the things you will find there is that there is something called divine supply somebody said divine supply out of the ground made the Lord God to grow it was the Lord that made it to grow there was no farmer at that time he made it to grow upon the earth every tree that is pleasant to the side and good for food so if you believe in the Eden dream in the Eden vision there's provision there there's provision you see everything in the kingdom will naturally grow the kingdom has a characteristic of growth if it's in this kingdom of God it will naturally grow so there's provision there somebody say my provision is here number two let's go to verse 11 very quickly as I round off go to verse 11 okay take it from verse 10 so that it can be concomitant and a river went out of where talk to me out of where to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became four heads so it means that out of Eden four heads came four river heads came out of that garden what are those rivers number one verse 11 the first thing he mentioned there the name of the first is called Pison somebody say Pison now Pison means overflow Pison means overflow it means that God planted a garden of overflow. That everything that you would ever need, God is not just promising you what is okay, what is enough. He said, I'm going to give you what is more than enough. I'm the all-sufficient God. I'm the all-breasted God. I'm going to give you overflow. And I'm praying for somebody that as we get into this new season, this is going to be your season of overflow. Oh, come on, you didn't hear me well. I said it will be a season of overflow. Let me tell you how that overflow is going to happen. Like Amos chapter 9 verse 11 explains it. Amos chapter 9 verse 11 to 15. Very powerful. And verse 13 is a very, very strategic one. He says, in that day, I'm going to raise up a tabernacle of David that is fallen. And close up the beaches thereof, I will raise up his ruins. And I will build it, build it as the days of old. And that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all of them which are called by the name of the Lord. Verse 13. This is going to be what your, your dimension is going to be after today. Somebody say amen to that. Give me the message version of verse 13. He said, behold, the days are here. Yes, indeed, it won't be long. And this is God's decree for anybody who can receive it. He said, things are going to happen so fast that your head will swim. One thing on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening all at once. And everywhere you look, there shall be blessings and blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills. Somebody say a big amen to that. So there's a blessing that is coming. See, there's not just provision in Eden, there's blessing in Eden. Number three, go back to the scripture in Genesis chapter 2. I think we're in verse 11. The name of the first river is Pison. And that's the wind that blows the entire villa and where gold came out from. Somebody's hand is going to touch gold. It's not going to be for show. It's going to be for kingdom advancement. You know we are getting to the end of the days and the mark of 666 one of the most powerful thing about the mark is that it's an economic mark that you must live in plenty you know i said to you some months ago this is the time to invest in agriculture a time is coming on the earth that you would be so shocked and we are getting to the end of time i hope you still believe that jesus is still coming yes he's still coming let's leave that verse 12 go to verse 12 I said, and the gold of the land is good. And Delium and Onyx stone came from that place. That's Pison. So though we left Pison caught, but we are still in Pison. Somebody say Amen. Verse 13, the name of the second river is called Gion. Everybody say Gion. Now the word Gion there means sweetness. So Eden does not just have provision or the blessings of God. There is sweetness there. Oh, God is saying to you this morning, your life will be sweet. 
your situation may have been ugly for many years but you know you can be like that person who comes to the beautiful gate and yet your life is ugly but you come to the beautiful gate every day every sunday but in the name of the lord jesus god is going to take away every ugliness in your life and it's going to restore sweetness back to you only oh, amen does not believe that verse 14 he said and that went encompassing the land and the name of the third river is called Hidekel. somebody said Hidekel. Hidekel means god's arrow shot for glory you know one of the things we believe is that you know you know our our mantra is that we are reconnecting man back to god number one number two after we reconnect them back to god we create an environment for them so the first one is evangelism an environment to connect with god which is worship that's number two number three is as they worship we will infuse kingdom culture not religious culture kingdom culture into the hearts of people you know so that they can understand what the kingdom is entirely about and that's not just worship now that's now that's fellowship that's indoctrination and these people are deployed to go take over the world listen the end of your life is not to be a worker in god's kingdom the end of your life is that you must be an ambassador representing god in every sphere of influence glory be to god say that amen like you believe it so the bible calls you that there's a river that came out of that place that river is called hidekel you are god's own arrow shot for glory can i pray for somebody this morning that the reason and the purpose which God created you for, that a season of deployment is going to begin in your life, and God is going to be releasing you to the places he has created you for, that your amen needs some help. Verse 15, as we run fast. So number one, we said in Eden, there's provision. Number two, there's overflow. What is number three? There's sweetness. Number four, there is what? Deployment, God's own arrow shot for glory. Let's look at the last river, you know, and the last river in verse 15. And the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. That we, we skipped the last river, I think it's in the it's in the previous verse. It's called Euphrates. Yes, verse 14. Said so the name of the third is Edekel, which goeth to the east in Assyria, and the fourth river is called Euphrates. Now the word Euphrates then means breakthrough. So this is not just a house of deployment it's a house of breakthrough there is nothing you come in here with that you're not going to break through so that amen like you believe it in prayers you will break through in success you will break through in kingdom assignment you will break through so that amen like you believe it then he went on to verse 15 like i said i'm just recasting and the lord took man and put him in the garden of Eden and he dressed it and he kept it. He took him into a place that was already prepared for the man. Can I pray that this week is going to be a week of divine coincidences. That God is going to pick you and take you to the place where he has dressed for you and the place that he has kept for you. Simply say that this is going to be a week you will lay hold of your inheritance. There are inheritances for you in the kingdom. May this week be the week where conversations will arise on your behalf and God is going to put your hands on your in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Say that amen like you believe it. Let's run very fast to verse 18. Verse 18. And the Lord God said that it is not good for a man to be alone. And all these things were happening in the garden. Someone say in the garden. It is not good for a man to be alone. I'm going to make him an help meet for him. So anybody who is having marital challenges or you're trusting God for marriages, God says in Eden, there are marriages there. He said in Eden, it is not good. It is not good. Tell yourself it is not good. It is not good for a man to be alone. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare bountiful marital breakthroughs. Say that amen like you believe it. Verse 20. So there's marital breeze in Eden. Tell your neighbor, say you're in the good house. 
verse 20 he said that adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowls of the air and every beast of the field and for adam there was not found and help it for him but he said that he gave names to all the cattle and when god would speak god said these are the same names i would have given those animals if i were to if i were to be the one to name them so adam tapped into what they call supernatural intelligence how can adam know the heart of god he looked at this thing he did not call it a uh, wire he called it a speaker and god said that's exactly what i would have called it he looks at a dog you know he would have called a dog chameleon and god said no it's not chameleon and adam said this is god this is dog and god said yes that's what i would have called it he looked at the snake he said this is snake god said that's the same thing it's called supernatural intelligence you know in the last days the mountain of the lord shall be exalted above all the mountains of the earth and all nations shall flow into it and that shall say come teach us the way of the lord can i say something to the body this morning there's a supernatural intelligence that is coming out of the church that will humble the pride of the world come and say a big amen to that and god is going to raise you for a time like this to bring forth witty invention for the glory of the kingdom somebody say amen to that whatever adam called it that's why that's the same thing god would have called it so it means that if i call you blessed this morning it's the same thing god would have called you so this morning i call you blessed this morning i call your careers blessed this morning i call your businesses blessed this morning i call your families blessed in the name of jesus whatever he called it god said it's the same thing i would have called it genesis chapter 3 and verse 8 all in Eden. Chapter 3 verse 8 And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. You know this time Jesus had not manifested in the flesh. Jesus was still in the word. Hallelujah. He was still the word. It was when the word became flesh that's when we saw the physical Jesus on the earth. So here Jesus had been but there was no physical Jesus Joseph if you get what I mean there was no physical Jesus Joseph but there was Christ already in view but the word what was what was existing and the Bible says that and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day that gives you an idea that Jesus was there that's why Jesus stood there before Abraham words I am you see that now so he was walking in the garden of the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord it was a place of conversation eden is a place of conversation a place of conversing with god a place to speak to god and god speaks to you glory to god so i'm also praying that you will find a walk with god this season that the walk with god will be greater than it used to be that your fire level in God will increase, your test, your hunger for the things of the Spirit will increase. Somebody say a big amen to that. There's so much to say that you can find in Eden. Is it blessings? He blessed them. He said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue the earth, have dominion, and take territories over the things that I've sent you. Glory be to God. Let me show you one or two more. Go to verse 24. Verse 24. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and flaming sword which turned every way and to keep the way of life. So this was when Adam was sent out of the garden. Adam and Eve together they were sent out. Remember what happened between Eve and Adam and so they were sent out of the garden and when they were sent out of the garden very very interesting god now put cherubims that had flaming swords round the garden so that man will not be able to return back to that place again so he put it around it you know and glory to god one of the things jesus came to do for us is that jesus came to open that same door of eden for us glory to god he opened up you know adam he was the first man you know and jesus became not the second adam he became the last adam and one of the things he came to do for us that he came to open the doors that were shut against man so it means that if man were to return back to eden the flaming swords were to deal with us the cherubims were to turn us away from the place so we never had access to god so you'll find that we had to have judges and kings and we had a lot of people they were now they became intermediaries prophets and priests they became intermediaries between us and god 
God. And you know when Jesus Christ resurrected from hell and he was going to ascend to heaven, he got to the gates that were shut in Psalm 24. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and let the king of glory come in. Then the cherubims that were placed here asked him a question, who is this king of glory? And Jesus answered and said, the Lord strong and mighty, and the one that is mighty in battle. Which battle is he talking about? Colossians 2 15. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. So in the name of the Lord Jesus, every door that is shut against you, I command a fortune this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh, your amen does not show that you believe it. I command every door shut to be open. I command every door shut to be open. Every gate shut open. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So it's a place of open doors. Tell yourself, no door will be shut against me. So as you step into this week, new doors will open. You know, there are some doors you walk towards and they sense you and they open on their court. There are doors that will open for you on their courts this week. There are some that will, you will open with your hands this week. What I am saying is that no door, no obstacle, by virtue of the anointing of God upon here this morning, no door will be shut against you this week in the name of Jesus. So it means that this week is going to be a week of congratulations. It's going to be a week of good news. It's going to be a week of congratulations. In the name of Jesus. That's all you're going to hear. You're not going to hear bad news this week. All you'll be hearing is congratulations. Stamped. Approved. Congratulations. Stamped. Approved. Who am I speaking to? Stamped. Approved. Congratulations. Stamped. Approved. Congratulations. That's going to be your portion. In the name of Jesus. Should I share one more with you? Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. Verse 2 to 3. Very quickly. What is in Eden? Wow. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. So there are many mountains, but there's one mountain that is going to be on the top of the others. So there's fashion mountain, there's education mountain, there's family mountain, there's business mountain, and the demons of the world, and, and many unbelievers are sitting on those mountains. But the Lord said that in the last days, and you know we're in the last days, in fact we're in the last days, than the last days of Peter. He said the mountain of the Lord, Eden, shall be exalted above all all the mountains of the earth and above the hills and the nations they shall flow into it go to verse 3 very quickly this is prophetic for the church said and many people shall go and they shall say come ye let us go to the mountain of the lord to the house of god where he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his path for out of zion out of eden shall go forth the law out of Eden will go for the Lord, the transformers will show for the people who will transform the world and the word of God from Jerusalem. So it means that this is a place of transformation. Isaiah 51 and verse 3. That's the last scripture we'll look at this morning, and we are done. 51 and verse 3. And the Lord shall comfort Zion, He will comfort all our waste places. Oh, I hope you know my name is Zion. I am the Zion of the Lord. I don't know if you are Zion, but I call myself Zion. He said, the Lord shall comfort Zion. And he will bring, he will comfort all her waste places. All your waste places. God says, I'm comforting you. He will make my wilderness like what? Come on, say it. He will make my wilderness like what? The garden of the Lord. The garden of the Lord. He will, your wilderness will be turned to the garden of the Lord. Do you know what they call the garden? There's no time to explain the garden of the Lord. The place where God dwells. Which means that if there is something in your life that has been repelling people, repelling their favors from you, God says that you would have the smell of the garden of the Lord. And I said to somebody, your smell is about to change. How you have been perceived. 
people have perceived you wrongly, judged you wrongly, but in the name of the Lord, your smell is about to change. You shall be the garden of the Lord. Today you will not become forsaken again, for your name shall be called Behula. Behula, the garden of the Lord. Said, I will make your wilderness like Eden. He said, and your desert will be like the garden of the Lord. And see what it says. He said, joy and gladness shall be found in your garden. He said, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. And I add to my own the voice of congratulations. And congratulations. And congratulations. And congratulations. Glory be to God. You know what I want you to do this morning? I wanted to walk up to 10 people and prophetically tell them, congratulations. Congratulations. When you get to the 10th person, you will give the Lord praise.